Uh, hello, my name is Kalle Launiala uh, and uh, welcome to watch this uh, afterwards recorded video set of uh, of a session or seminar held uh, joint held uh, by uh, Alo Global Impact and uh, Citrus uh, about the ADM, the ball and the open innovation platform that's been built uh, with Alto Global Impact. The video is uh, split in three parts. First, uh, we'll uh, give up a brief history of ADM to the ball. Um, then there will be another set of uh, explaining the basics of the ball. And uh, then there will be uh, the now and near future scenarios and the business cases about the ball uh, that we currently see of. Uh, to uh, to know this is uh, just a uh, uh, slide slide set of uh, my presentation, so this does not include the uh, preparing presentations from uh, Jurgen Karel's uh, about the Kaloum. That actually explains a bit more concrete way what the ball, ball can be used. Uh, uh, nor it does uh, include the uh, session from uh, or the other global impact introduction parts, which also give a very concrete business cases of uh, existing uses of uh, Altos instance and the opportunities to build business or enter the business in that instance. Acronyms to be used in the presentation, Open Innovation and the Collaboration Platform is referred as OIP, Alto Global Impact is referred as Alto and Finnish public sector is uh, mentioned as the Julk ICT. Uh, it's worthwhile to mention in the beginning that ADM is a rare breed of innovation. It's an uh, innova incremental and disruptive innovation in the same package. Uh, its power actually comes from the incremental aspect. It's a tiny adjustment of today's way of working software. It's very uh, familiar kind of technology that developers are uh, use, uh, used to do, but it solves certain difficult problems so completely that it's extremely disruptive. It introduces no compromises over today's way of doing because it's side by side applicable with today's way of doing. It's a method not a tool, framework, nor, nor even a library. So it introduces basically no additional constraints over mainstream tooling what the developers are already using. And as a side-by-side, -side, um, it means that you, uh, any solution can automate any single part of it, uh, do manual work uh, and step-by-step automate or even stop automating if they over automate something and uh, be constantly moving onwards without having to revert back in anything because the automation provides exactly comparable or better output than the humans uh, human developers do in the same same stage so <clears throat> if you compare anything that you see uh, regarding to ADM with any existing method or a tool stay very focused because it is it is a combination of uh, existing practices there is actually very little new things introduced in it there are a few very critical uh, aspects of applying the current tools that get around of, uh, get around of the real problems in the in the process it sounds so familiar and when we when you start to hear the claims, what it solves, and how easy it will be. It's the same kind of market bus that you've heard tens, hundreds, hundreds of times before. So it's easy to forget that there is real breakthrough in behind. And for this time, what you see, you can very easily verify that it holds true. There is no compromise anymore. So then the history summary of the ADM that enables the creation of the ball. ADM was born to solve the software developer interchangeability within a software project. We needed a practical solution 
that would be in place ac applicable in an on ongoing pro project uh, with no additional tooling allowed, no additional anything, no frameworks, nothing. And we managed to find a way to do it as an everywhere available based on the XML schema, XML standard, and uh, everywhere available T4 template code generation, generator. Uh, we had strict technical and business constraints to meet. The end results had to match the reference code as if it was human created. And we had to justify all the work that we do to apply the method with close to immediate return of investment, meaning that the project didn't have to justify to the stakeholders why we are investing in such a thing. We, we solved uh, the problem by finding a way to raise the level of abstraction and using incomplete automation. It sounds like uh, falling short, but instead it actually provides a way that we, we don't have to make any compromises when uh, trying to aim for full-scale automation. We can stop automation and fall back to manual work on the same areas of code so the manual workers and the automation work side by side. Basically it meant that we were replacing the manual code guidances uh, with manually maintained automates and levels uh, um, abstraction modules that were driven from the higher level of abstraction by the software designers and not, not anymore necessarily the coders. Automation actually is nothing new in the software development if we look it from a bit higher, view, higher level view. Today's software development actually makes simple things more complex uh, when it tries to reduce the manual labor. Object-oriented programming provides certain ways to reduce the code and provide what seems to be reusable and the reusability technologies include libraries, frameworks, or uh, even something threaded, uh, treated as a separate ecosystems, which actually still have very close to zero real reusability. The problem in the reusability lies in the technical detail of trying or not being able to binary level combine different platform compilations or even the same platform compilations uh, from uh, different languages. The example why it sounds so weird is uh, if we look at the cross-platform mobile development. In real world we have identical interfaces meaning that we have familiar buttons uh, with some kind of meanings and pretty much identical screens. We also have identical application logic if we are talking about an application that's supposed to run on multiple different mobile platforms. So why the same application has to be re rewritten multiple times and why it is so difficult still to apply any kind of user-centered design in the process. Very brief history summary of the development from the core ADM to the ball. I'll skip the main points, but uh, the uh, process started at the July of 2009, starting from a manually guided software structures to get identical and universal structures for, for uh, business processes and information modeling so that the uh, next guy coming in to replace some earlier developer can be easily guided where he finds certain kind of functionality and how he's supposed to document and, and uh, design and then implement his own so that again the next guy can take over. The real breakthrough happened in August 2010 when we happened to find very practical and efficient tooling support for the process. And we immediately realized that it uh, actually enables cross-platform targeting with uh, 
clear difference that it, it targets native SDKs with no additional library nor um, framework. And at that stage we realized that this will change everything. Then easily two years pass when we gradually built up full ecosystem infrastructure, completing that on January 2012. And during the springtime and the summertime, we finally can wrap our message of the ecosystem in a more easier consumable way so that people start to understand how easy it will be, how easy it is to enter, and uh, how immediate it is uh, available to use.